folks, I'm so excited today because I'm not alone. And not only am I not alone, <laughs> I'm being joined by Paul Ray. Yay. This is I'm so excited to talk to you again. I feel like you're one of the people I saw before the world ended. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> oh, it sounds so dark. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but I'm yeah, like, no, it's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah. It's pandemic after. Yeah. Right. So it's been two years since I last had the opportunity to interview you. And you've been very, very busy. I mean, I, like, I don't want to give any spoilers away. But so mm. comparing, so February, this is February 8th, 2023. Let's rewind back to, I think when I interviewed you, it was what? March it's 6th, even, it's, 2020? Yeah it's, yeah, it's even three years ago. That's right. Insane. Oh my gosh. Whoa. See, yeah, I'm so living, three years. I, I deleted a year. I deleted a year. What? <laughs> we all did. We all did. <laughs> right, right. So what have you been up to in these last three years? Three years. Uh, that's it's It's been hectic, actually. So uh started off with, uh, with the pandemic. You're having to cancel all the shows. And I felt like I was on top of the world right before being in Melfest, getting to the final, having uh, the song getting, you know, received really well with the Swedish people. And, uh, but yeah, so pandemic hits in March, like you said, 2020. Uh, and I'm actually at that point writing my, uh, my bachelor's, uh, essay, uh, trying to get that finished. So I get that done. So I grab my bachelor's in 2020, uh, find out my wife is pregnant in 2020. Uh, and she gives birth to our daughter in the end of 2020. Uh, so I become a father. That's a pretty huge deal as well <laughs> and then I wrote a song about her my daughter and then I enter Melfest again 2021 uh and this is full pandemic mode no crowds no arena tour throughout Sweden it's just yeah an empty studio and uh and then after that Melfest I grab my uh, master's in uh, marketing and economics so uh and then release music and being a songwriter 2022 in Melfest so I've been busy I've been trying to work you know there's nothing else to do, being a father and then putting some work. <laughs> well, I, I have to ask because I think I remember this at the end of our interview. I think I, I then was like, oh, I'm pregnant. And like everyone's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's true. That's true. Oh, my God. So it's, it's the same age for our kids then, right? Yeah, essentially. Kind of. Yeah, kind wow. of. I think my daughter's probably like a couple of months older. But yeah, yeah, yeah. toddler land is a scary, wow. scary place. <laughs> <laughs> it's intense. It's intense, especially during lockdown. It's just like there's no where to go. It's Nowhere just, to go. Let's entertain the kid inside of our apartment. <laughs> and that's it. Well, I have to ask for you, has fatherhood maybe changed you a little bit as a creative? I mean, maybe it hasn't. But do you feel like you tap into different subject matter? Do you, Is it inspiring you more? I just, I just wonder if that's... I don't know, changed your perspective a little bit as someone who's a creative. I mean, yes, um, it has. Like, if you're just looking at it, like the way that I work now is way different. My hours are way different. I try to keep it like a nine to five uh, in general so that I can have this uh, regular time of not being in the studio till midnight or whatever. It's just like, I want to hang out with the family, you know? Uh, so the way that I work has changed. And then funny thing is actually uh, this year or 2022 last year, I released music in Swedish for the first time. So I started I started uh, branching out a little bit on on the music that I made. And a lot of the music was uh, up tempo and uplifting. Like it was really um, it was energetic uh, compared to my uh, English stuff, my earlier stuff. So I think like I wanted to make music that she would be happy listening to like, oh, she likes the beat and she's singing along to the melodies and it's energetic. So, yeah, I think uh, I think it changed both the way that I work and uh, w what it sounds like the music that I do. I love that. I mean, I it's interesting because I always ask this, especially with Melody Festival and because I think so much so in recent years, we've seen a lot of folks be artists at, at Melfest, but then also be a songwriter, which one is better? Which and, and also, how is that process a little bit different? Is it, you know, because I think with Melfest, there still is sort of the celebration of the songwriters and whatnot. 
But what do you think? Is there a better or is it just different? What is, and if there are differences, what are the real kind of contrasts that you would say from being an artist and actually like just kind of entering as a songwriter? I mean, uh, it's way less stressful being a songwriter. It's incredibly fun and you get to like you get to just enjoy all the best parts and with with you being an artist there's a lot of prep there's a lot of pressure you got to deliver on air uh you gotta it ha you, you have to nail the performance uh, like when it's live and it's like it's it's a lot of stress and pressure when but when you're entering as a songwriter it's like you, your job is already done uh you're just you're just showing up you're waving to the tv to the camera you know and that's it and um and you know i'm i'm always the songwriter as well when i when i enter as an as artist uh so in that case i get to do both but yeah it's i gotta say last year when i when i was entering as just the songwriter it was so much fun <laughs> yeah oh i love that now you've also collaborated with a lot of folks and that's another thing i think i love about Melody Festival and is you you get to collaborate. It really feels like this kind of family within, I'd say, the music industry in Sweden. Everyone kind of knows each other. So are there any people performing at, at Melfest this year that you've written with, been in the studio with, that maybe you're excited to kind of see step out on the stage? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, Laurel, uh, me and her, we both live in Malmö. Uh, and uh, we've written together multiple times, and we uh, we wrote the missing piece together uh, that I performed with in Melfest 2021. So I'm really excited to be in the same. Uh, oh, what do you call it? Dance traveling the the competition heats. that I'm in. Heats. Yeah, semifinal. There you go. But Melfest does heats. So yeah, heat okay. three. <laughs> so exactly to be in the same heat as her is gonna be so much fun and. Uh, uh, well, it's not that that fun to compete against each other, but you know, I get to see each other during the week and hang out. That's awesome. Um, I've written with uh, Melanie Riebe as well, who's also in the same heat as me, uh, and they're both uh, doing their debuts as artists uh, this year. And uh, she's also incredibly talented, both as a songwriter and as an artist and singer. Um, and uh, I mean, that's from that's from my heat. I think of the people that I've worked with, but yeah, from from the from the whole lineup this year, there's a lot of people that I've worked with. It's, it's always fun to to meet everybody again. So hopefully, I'll go through to either the semis or the finals, and I get to see more of my friends. <laughs> I love that, and I, I have to say, I'm I'm feeling a little bit of FOMO because I was planning actually to go to Heat Four in Malma, mm. but then flights was ridiculous and. Mm. I have a whole house and a baby and I'm like, I need to make better decisions with my money. So, you know, my wallet was just like, girl, <laughs> Do not. Yeah, exactly. they were like, you want to live this life, but, <laughs> but you're not, <laughs> we're, That's we're putting our foot down. That's understandable. <laughs> so I'm feeling a little bit of FOMO by missing some of the Melfest action, but, but it's okay. Cause we're having this conversation right now. So, Enjoy. you know, it's lovely. Yeah. So we're working it out. I, I, I do have to ask, do you feel like, because your last time at Melfest, that was Christer's like official last Melody Festival. And was that 20, was it 2020 or 2021? 2021 was the, like the farewell tour. Cause he was yeah. hosting. Yeah. Does it feel, I and I, I think maybe for us in the Eurovision bubble, because we just know him so well, like, does there feel like a difference in the production like with Krister involved or now, or is it just sort of like he kind of set it up, the system's just moving, or do you feel like there's maybe a different energy around or a different uh, perspective of producing the shows now that Krister isn't, isn't our like executive producer? Because he was like the executive producer. I think that's the official title. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, I haven't done the heat yet, so I, I'm not really sure. And when I was in last year as a songwriter, I was I was I was literally just showing up for the airing of the heat and then in the final and being like, what's up? And then just enjoying the party. So it felt like everything was running smooth. I think that everything is running smooth so far. Everything has been running smoothly. So um, I think the the mindset that uh, 
that Carly now has, who is like the new Krister, I guess you could say. Um, there, it's it's similar to to what Krister had the idea of it. Uh, both having the tour in different countries, uh, in different different cities, and and having different genres represented because it's really like a festival for for the whole of Sweden for everyone. It's it's for uh, it's for it's for grandpa. It's for it's for the three year old. It's for the student who's twenty years old just having wanting to have a good time on a Saturday night. I mean, it, so so they they really embody the same. Um, um, the same uh, mindset for the for the show, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see. Absolutely, like competing as an artist this year, just just to see if I notice any differences or anything like that. But so far during the rehearsals and everything, it's just been, you know, same old smooth sailing. Okay, I do have to ask because. I'm the girl that talks about the staging. I know you can't give us what is going to happen. I know that y'all, mm. I can't. He's not going to give us that. That's okay. But what I am kind of curious about is what is the process that goes into figuring out the staging package? Do you just bring fully your ideas? Is it a collaboration with you and the team or your team and then the television production team? do they sort of even kind of say like, hey, somebody else is doing this, so maybe we want to mix it up? Like if you had an idea, like just what is that process like to bring the staging to life? Uh, it's very different for each act. Uh, but for me, every single time it's been, because I'm very, um, uh, I like to be creative in all, all parts of the, of the, of the act, both, both songwriting, both music production, uh, the artwork, the music video, the staging, the outfits. It's like I, I like to have a whole kind of concept for me when I, when I want to enter uh, Melfest. So I always present my idea, my vision. Uh, I, I might have different references or a mood board or something like that and some, and some specific colors in mind. Um, so it's always very different, but it's always a collaboration. Uh, it's, they bring so much to the table, uh, the people from Esvetia, they're, they're, they're brilliant and they're, I, I fully trust them. So it's really, it's not like, a uh, it's not like a nervous, like, oh, are they gonna, are they gonna mess up my vision or anything like that? It's like, no, they all, they always make it better. They all, so I, I can come with like a seed of an idea like maybe something like this and then you have a meeting two weeks later and they're like and in the two minutes and 45 this is gonna happen and it's just like ah oh, it's brilliant so uh, it's it's a, it's the most exciting process to be a part of oh i love that i love that and i like the fact that you you mentioned the word trust because it's like i i think for sometimes me just as i i always say like me in my Eurovision mindset is like, I'm like a crazy nervous stage mom, I would say is my, <laughs> is my thing. I have this energy of where I'm like, okay, what's gonna happen? Yeah, <laughs> what's going yeah. on? Um, so, but I love that, that, that the artists feel comfortable to trust. And, and I think you see that with Melody Festival. And that's why I think year after year, it ends up being one of those national selections that a lot of folks outside of Sweden do want to tune into. And I guess my other question, and I think with Melfest in comparison to some other national selections and, and I do think at a lot of national selections, it happens, but I think Melfest gets called out a lot. We see a lot of artists and now you're one of them that want to return. And is it just because the experience is, is great? Do you get asked or is it just kind of one of these things? You're a songwriter in Sweden and it's just like, hey, Melfest is rolling around. I got a new track. <laughs> Let me try and get it in the, in the mix. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, for sure, me wanting to return a hundred percent has to do with my wonderful experiences of being a part of this of this show. Um, so it's it, it's it's something that you just look forward to of just being a part of and like you said, feeling safe not only with like the staging but also with just the whole production when you show up for your week for the heat or for the semifinal or for the final it's just you're always just like relaxed you know everything is going to work out smoothly um so it's a it's a wonderful experience um but uh what was the second part of the question i'm sorry no i mean you really answered it because i i think some people go like well i it's like who's going to be at melfest and it's like okay we got these people that just keep coming back keep coming mm. back keep coming back and i mean i i think about it from the perspective of like Look, if I was in Sweden and I'm singing and songwriting, I'm trying every year. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm I'm putting up a song every year, you know, either it gets accepted or it doesn't. 
Um, but it seems like something that's just, I would say like, why not? Why yeah. not come back? No, I mean, I like 100%. And, and the different ways that I've entered all, all of the, these different years, it's been very, it's been very different. Uh, but this year, now that it's my third year as, as an artist, I, I, I really wanted to do something uh, that stands out from the other two songs that are presented as an artist. So uh, that makes me excited as well of seeing how it will be received from, uh, from the Swedish people, from the international crowd uh, and an international audience. So yeah, it's, uh, this year is something, uh, something special. Okay, so again, I know you can't give us too much, but can we get the genre? What, what is the feel of the song this year? And maybe what is the emotion you want people to feel when they witness the whole package? I mean, I can say that the song and the staging is it's big. It's... The song is like a little bit anthemic, kind of, and uh, energetic. Uh, I want people. I want people to feel uh, uplifted and um, and and happy when they hear this song. Okay, I love that. I, I got it. I got it. This was this was a good a good promo because Melody Festival has some heavy hitters this year. We got yeah. some heavy hitters in the mix. We we kicked yeah. off Heat One with Jan Henrik and the and the collabo with the DJ and singer. Mm -hmm. We got Lorian coming back. Heat yeah. Four. Mariette is back. Perfect yeah. uh, qualification record to the final. I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, will this year be the one? Who knows where we mix it up? I, I who knows? We got heavy hit hitters and then this other group. What is it? Marcus and Martinez. Apparently they're a really big deal. In oh, Sweden. they are, yeah. Okay, yeah. so we got heavy hitters. I mean, what, mm -hmm. when you saw the lineup, do y'all already know who's gonna be participating, or is it like news to y'all on the reveal day? No, it's also news to us on the reveal day. So it's a really exciting. I think they did it for two days now, with like heat one and two, and then heat three and four the second day. Um, so it's really exciting. And then that's also the same time that I get to know who am I competing against in my, in my heat. So, uh, they really keep it on lock. Like you don't, they don't tell you anything at all. You, you might even be doing, yeah, I, I even started doing rehearsals, I think before I knew who I was competing against. And I was, and I was like, with the whole production, I was like, I was like, all right, when am I, am I opening the show? Am I closing the show? Am I in the middle somewhere? What's the week look like? And they're like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Keeping it under wraps, but we're all going to be watching and rooting for you for Heat 3, Delta Link 3, um, Espetel. You nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Melody Festival, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for speaking with me. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was so much fun to talk to you again.